Good afternoon, guys. How's everybody? Actually, good evening. Kaise ho, Jaydeep? And come a little closer, Jaydeep. Bored to see you on that side. Come this side. See this side. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much. Thanks for asking. <clears throat> All right, guys. Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to our grammar class. For those people who have just joined us, um, in that online. So <clears throat> this is something we do every day. So again, if you're if you're old and you have been watching our grammar classes, you know what do we do in this session. We cover some important grammar rules. And those who are new, uh, this is an institute in Dutch PT and IELTS. My name is Zishan, and uh, we train students for uh, Pearson's test, um, which is an English testing system in Australia. So this, whether it is an IELTS or it is any other lang language tests, um, any other language test, you can benefit from uh, the rules that we discuss here um, uh, in terms of your reading as well as your writing yeah all right so without uh, any further ado let's come straight to the point yesterday we covered uh, four to five uh, grammar rules roughly more than five grammar rules um, most of you were here yesterday i believe raj was here as well jaydeep uh, was here as well yesterday so um, what did we finish on what was the last Yeah, so we talked about two collocations yesterday. Um, when you talk about journey, you always say make a journey. Yeah, so we made a journey from half across the world. Yeah, so make a journey from north to south. Make a journey from Australia to England. Make a journey from. Uh, so make a journey is a collocation. It means travel. And similarly, I said that whenever you talk about a trip, yeah, it's not journey, it's a trip. So this time you will not say make a trip, you will say take a trip, yeah. So take a trip and make a journey. So that's what that's where we stopped uh, yesterday. So moving further and um, <clears throat> coming up to today's grammar and come to the notebook. Do you guys maintain the notebook for grammar grammar rules that we do in the class as well? So the, preferably you must store it on your. Uh, Google Keep or maybe your um, cloud storage or somewhere where it is safe. Even if you are not part of Indasbiti anymore, you still have those grammar rules with you so that you know you don't get confused later on. I mean, whenever you're writing a formal email or maybe a formal message to someone, you know that I'm using the wrong grammar, grammatical structure. You can go back and open open that file. So beneficial for both for all of us. So for now, just maintain a notebook and put all those grammar because this is something we're going to do on a daily basis. So very important for all of us. Now, <clears throat> now let me write a sentence here today. And I want all of you to pay attention and tell me. <clears throat> just a second, guys. Just trying to fix this one. Just give me a second. All good. So let's come to the point here. I'm going to, but why can't we see it there? We'll hang out. It's there, right? You. Let's.
Oh, sorry about the technical glitch there. All right, guys. So let's come straight to the point. I'm going to write a sentence here. Is it visible? Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so the sentence says, Okay, let's make it simple. Let's make it simple. Yeah. <clears throat> so my son or his son, yeah, because my son doesn't make sense here. Yeah. So his son dash after his father. Yeah. So much. Now uh, let me give you the let me give you the background context of this. So for example. <clears throat> Have you heard of this thing that the appearance biologically of your face, biologically you either actually look like, look like either your mother or your father. It's one of those. Or maybe you have appearance, a bit of both. So in this case, if I'm using that context and I want to use that word, looks like, what would you put in this particular blank? His son dash after his father so much. Resembles, but can you say his his son resembles after his father? Can you use after with resembles? It should be his son resembles his father. Yeah? Could be anything. But you can't put after with resembles. How can you tell me? What is the collocation here? What is the context I'm talking about here? Uh, there's a zabardas strategy guys and i want you guys to know this now of course this uh, i mean not strategies this is the grammar rule here so for example when you use after you use it with look isn't it look after oh, here i could say look after yeah looks after but is it the same as resembles look after look after what do you mean by look after what do you mean by this collocation look after huh Take care, yeah? So look after actually means to actually take care, yeah? That's what look after means. The take takes care. Some, some of my son takes care of him or something like this. But are we talking about caring here in this particular context? I just gave you the context. The context is that the appearance is the same. The facial structure and everything is the same. What is the collocation here? Now, how about this? Let me write this sentence. The sentence will be something like this. Did you see this? Did you see this? What is the collocation? What did I use here? Take after. What does it mean? That when the father leaves, you take something. Yeah? Now, it doesn't mean take after. Take after here means resemble. You see my point? So take after is a structure, is a collocation that actually means resemble. If now from now onwards, if there is a native speaker or someone who actually, who actually tells you, you take after your father, how weird does it sound? Dur, dur tuk, you can't even guess that it means resemble, but it means resemble. So don't think like when somebody says you take after your father, it means that my, when, whenever my father leaves, I take something from his pocket. Uh, that, that's not what it means. Take after here means resemble. Can you write the meaning and the collocation as well? Number one, take after means, so let's highlight it and let me write the meaning as well so that you don't ever make a mistake in this collocation afterwards. So take after means resemble, yeah? <clears throat> All right, done with this one. Is it clear, yeah? Oh, this one, okay, how about this, yeah? Much better? Okay, how about this? So let's zoom it a little bit more, yeah? Much better. Sorry about that, guys. Now, tell me. How many of you have, know about uh, this famous, oh, you must know it already, about this famous monument called Taj Mahal? Shah Jahan, yeah? Shah Jahan. Shah Jahan, yeah? Thank you. Uh, Shah Jahan was the emperor in India, and he built a structure, a monument called Taj Mahal, yeah? Now, 
what if I write a sentence, something like this? Pay attention. Look at the look at the television, everyone. Look at the screen. And the sentence is. <clears throat> And I'll give you the options here. The options are Tell me. What is the answer here? Sort. I forgot your name, sorry. Love Preet. Love Preet thinks that it's sort. How many of you support Love Preet? Now, did you see the resemblance in both of these sentences? Yeah? Dash after, yeah? So look after, I just told you. Look after means taken care of, yeah? But can we say, is the taken after place? Is taken, off, uh, is taken after a collocation? It's not a collocation. Taken after doesn't mean collocation. It's not, it's not a collocation. It doesn't mean anything. Collocations are for those people who don't know what it is. Collocations are basically those two words which have a different meaning altogether. When you, but when, they, when you put them together, it actually changes the meaning altogether. And I've talked about these collocations before as well. All of you from now onwards today, Google them at home, collocations. What do you mean by collocations? Make a list, make a notebook, and maintain those collocations. For example, collocations could be anything. Let me give you a simple example. Do you need, have you heard of the word, of course, in Mario, P U T put, yeah? So put. So there are a number of collocations that can come with this word put, and it can change the meaning altogether. For example, if I use a preposition after put, and the preposition is on, and I'm using this entire chunk as put on. What does it mean? Huh? Gaining. Gaining. Put on doesn't mean gain. Who can tell me? I'll be really glad if somebody comes up with the answer. Put on. Like a or huh? Wait. Wait. Yeah, of course, not bad. Yeah, not bad. You're nearly there. Yeah, of course, wait. You can say put on, wait. Yeah, you can. Add more extra things. Put on is a collocation when, for example, if it is very cold outside and it's snowing, I'll say, put on your jacket. What does it mean? Wear, simply wear. Put on your hat. Wear the hat, yeah? How about if I change this on to off? Does it mean take it off? Nah, it doesn't mean take it off here. Yeah. Here the meaning changes. Put on means wear, but put off doesn't mean take off the cloth. clothes. Clothes. Put off means disappoint. Put off means disappoint. It put me off. Is it clear? Put on, wear, put off, disappoint. How about put, put out? Other people will be thinking, oh, put out. To take something and throw it outside, yeah? Is that what you mean by put out? That's not normally how collocations work. Who can tell me the meaning of put out? Hmm? Leave? Nah. End. Huh? End? End? Nah. Shreshna, you try. Oh, you've been here all day. Tell me, put out. Before entering this building, you need to dash that cigarette. You need to put out. You need to put out that cigarette. You know, put out, blow, <sighs> bujana. Is it clear? Put out that candle before you sleep. Now, don't throw that candle outside. Yes, mummy. Hi, put out that candle. It doesn't mean that. Put out means actually to <sighs> blow. So, you see the collocations there? Put on, yeah? Put off, put out. How about put up? Now, you'll be thinking, sir, khatam ne ho <laughs> How about put up? Huh? Put up? Anyone? Let me give you a sentence so that it'll be a little easier for you to t tell the meaning, at least guess the meaning. 
you've been so so bad with me from past couple of days now i think that i really can't dash with you i really can't put up with you put up means tolerate i can't put up with your rude behavior anymore i can't put up money i can't tolerate these are the collocations that you need to learn learn these collocations understand their meaning so that you don't you don't you, you don't make any mistakes while you solve any reading questions in the exam or you don't mean any, make any mistakes while you write something or, or if somebody talks to you maybe a native speaker is talking to you he says he says something like this put out so what can you do put out he says put out or something like this and you will literally put it out and then he will put you out <laughs> See my point, your boss, your employer, or something like this. So in understanding these collocations are very, very important, guys. So similarly here, now what we are talking about this particular grammar rule here, let me come to this. And here it says Taj Mahal is the most dash after place in India. The word, the context, I'm going to give you the context beforehand. The context is famous. You know the context in first one was resemble? The context in number two is famous. What is the answer here? Sought after. Sought after means something that is popular, something, a place that is popular. For example, if I can say out of five branches in Melbourne, Footscray in Melbourne, Footscray is the most sought after branch of Imdad's PT. Sought after money, the most popular one. Yeah, the most, the, uh, it's, it's the post, past form of what verb? Seek. Seek, sought. Is it clear? Seek sort. So seek. People seek this particular place. It's more popular. It's more famous. So you have answer kya Bola is most sought after place. Of course, you can say looked after as well. Looked after, but the context changed. Look, look after, I told you already. It means care. But sought after means popular. So let's write it and remove the options here. Remove all those options here. And let's write the answer here. So sought after means. What do, what do you mean by, I just told you, sort of means popular destination or famous, yeah? Is it clear? So we learned two collocations here. So now tell me. Now this is number three. Now let's come to number three. Now guys, how many of you were not present yesterday? Can you please raise your hands in the grammar session? Did you go and make it? Make it up? Uh, did you make it up later on? Did you go through the website? Did you, did you go through the link? YouTube link, did you see those classes? So if you miss any classes, five to six, which is our grammar session, you can recover those classes back on our Facebook page in the grammar, yeah? Now, let's come to this, number three. Okay. Okay, let's make it simple. Now, can you look at this, guys? Look at look at this sentence, everyone. Talk to the management. Should you have any further questions? Pick a mistake in this sentence, guys. It should be. Talk to them. I forgot your name. Sorry. Randeep. Randeep says it should be talk to the management if you have any further questions. This normally happens at call center or blah, 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 all these management places or at the uh, places where customer service is important. If you have any further questions or if you have any further queries or if you have any further inquiries or any doubts, talk to the management or talk to the receptionist or something like this. Now, when you say talk to the management, should you have any further queries? Do you know that this sentence is 100% right? Normally, should is a model, and should I told you yesterday, day before yesterday, I believe, I told you that should and must are interchangeable in different case scenarios, but not all the times. Then I explain those grammar rules because if it has, if it is should have and must have, it is different. Yeah, what did I say about should have? Should have means regret. Now, do we talk about this for those people who have missed that class? Please, you can go and visit with that particular link, it is there. Should have means. Regret. Must have means? 
surety yeah but should and must i should do this i must do this must and should is interchangeable here but in this case should here doesn't mean that i should do something i should wake up early in the morning i should grab a coffee i should exercise should means something that you're not doing that you should that, that you should actually do is it clear here in this case should simply means if and should and if and should is more formal way of expressing this sentence but should and if are replaceable in this case scenario yeah is it clear? So it could be anything. For example, um, should you need any assistance? Talk to me. Should you need any assistance? You will see. You will most often see the uh, see, see these sentences written on uh, formal letters, maybe from your records department, from maybe. Of, let's come to the For example, if there are two situations, two case scenarios, and one case scenario is dependent on the other case scenario. Let me explain it to you guys very quickly. What do I mean by that? Now, that, that way. Okay, so for example, <clears throat> if you have something like this, now let me write this here, and you have got two conditions, yeah? One condition is dependent. Let me write this sentence so that it will be a little clear for you guys. Suppose, for example, Raj says that I want to, um, I want to give a party tomorrow. Yeah, So pizza party on me. But there is one condition. And that particular condition is I should get my scores first. Is it clear? So let's write this sentence. Tell me, guys, if I will get my score, so here are, here, are two here are two conditions here. So I will get my scores, but there is a condition. And the condition is that I'll only throw a party when I get my scores. That's the condition. These statements that start with if at the beginning, because that's what we started. I just told you, yeah, should and if is replaceable. But if you have a sentence that begins with if, the sentence is called a conditional statement, yeah? A conditional statement. If I, for example, if I, if I say something like this, yeah? If I will catch the bus, I will reach the destination on time. Matlab, agar mein bus jaldi pakarta hu, mein apne jaga bohat early pahunch paunga. For those people who don't understand Hindi, so this is like what? If I catch the bus, I, if I will catch the bus, I will reach the destination on time. Now, in this particular sentences, there are two clauses, yeah? Clause number one is, I will get my scores. Let's make it bold. And what is my clause number two? I will throw a party, yeah? Now, let me ask this to uh, Jadeep. As if you tell me, pick a mistake in this sentence, if any, if there is any mistake here. 
For example, if I say something like this, yeah, if I drink water, I will be hydrated. Similar, these are two conditions, th these are two statements here. So tell me if there is any mistake. Huh? If I, if I get my scores, wow, are you, you're not sure, yeah, Jadeep is 100% right guys, now these 10, now tell me one thing, is there a possibility of this happening, of course if I get my scores, there's a possibility, this could happen in the future, yeah, Although this is something we're talking about the future, but clause one will never have will or can. It will be simple present. How odd is it? Although I'm saying, agar mera score a jayega, is it clear? So Hindi is what? A jayega. We're talking about future. Yeah. But in English, your clause one will be simple present, not simple future. So this sentence is 100% wrong. Is it clear? How can we rephrase it? How can I make it simple present? Simple present kaise banega hai? If I get my score. So clause 1 will always be, let's write it here. It will always be simple present. Don't copy anything. Don't copy anything yet because we are not done with this rule. If I get my scores, it will always be in simple present. And then the next clause will be simple future. Say next clause kaisa hoga? Can or will. Is it clear? The next clause may you will see can or will. Something like this. Let's give some examples. Yeah. If I will drink water or if I drink water. If I drink water, comma, I can or I will be hydrated. Is it clear? Or I will quench my thirst. Or I can quench my thirst. I can quench my thirst. Is it clear? But what if I write something like this? If I will drink water, right or wrong? Of course, 100% wrong. Now, is there a probability that, is there a possibility, yes, I will drink water? Could be that I might drink water in future? There is a possibility. If I do if I drink water, these sentences where you know that you have a probability, you have a possibility of that action happening, these conditional statements, although they are conditional statements because they start with if, these conditional statements are called zero conditionals or real conditionals. Irreal or asana yaad rakhna. These are called, let me write it here, real conditionals. Yeah? And, and what is the pehchan of real conditional statements? If at the beginning, followed by two clauses, but clause one will, will always be in simple present. And clause two, kya hoga? will or can. If I come to Australia, I will, I will definitely meet you. Not if I will come to Australia. If I come to Australia. If I come to Australia, not if I will come to Australia. Or something like this. Yeah. Uh, if I will get my PR, I will enjoy life. Now, bolke, if I get my PR, I will enjoy life in Australia. Is it clear? Can you write this number one, Can, real conditional, please? Along with the examples as well, in your own way.
What can you see here? If my wife will come, I will be happy. Yeah. Now tell me, guys, is in this case scenario, we are 100% certain. I just give you the background context. We are 100% certain that my wife will not come because I already fought with her. There is a probability, there's very minute probability that she's not going to come. Yeah. But she's already angry with me. But in this case scenario, can I say if my wife will come? Yeah. Does it make sense? Because there is no possibility. Is it clear, guys? There's no possibility. In this case, I cannot write this sentence using will or in the end. I can't, I can't write it in a real or a zero conditional form. And how would we write those sentences? Now, am I not sitting there and wishing? Kash wo ajaye or ajati or me, I would have been happy or something like that. I would be happy. But I know that she's not going to come. How about this case scenario? Now, let me, let me talk about this. For example, um, you, are run out, you, run out, you run out of your visa. Now, you're in Australia. You're in India, sorry. You're not in Australia anymore. You're in India, yeah? You run out of your visa. But now, there is very least and minuscule possibility for you, for you to come back to Australia. And you are thinking in India. Um, Kash mein Australia mein hota. Are you in Australia? You're not in Australia. You're in India. So, in this case scenario, the probability, the possibility is very less. So, you can't say in this case scenario, if I will be in Australia. Can you write if I will be in Australia or if I am in Australia? No. Nah. In this case scenario, when you talk about a wish, a particular wish in near future, which you know is not going to happen, you write the sentence this way. If, if my, let me write this, if my wife, yeah? If my wife would come, yeah, or if I if my would come past, what am I using here? Past would will would yeah, or if my wife was here, yeah, would come or was here, both of them are right. Comma, in the next clause, you will not this time use can or will. What did I use here? I use simple past. Let me write it here. Simple past and. In the next clause, you will not use will or can, you will use would, yeah, let me write it, would, could, or might. Now, let me go through this again, for those people who didn't understand it. If my wife was here, I would be happy. I could be happy. I might be happy. Is it clear? Is, is she going to be here? She's not going to be here, because you know, She's already fought with you. There's a very minuscule possibility. She has no possibility. And this case, this, this particular conditional statement is called unreal conditional statement. Let me write it in the bracket. It's called unreal conditional sentence. Yeah. Unreal conditional sentence. Let me give you one more example. So let's come to this and I'll give you some examples so that it'll be a little bit more easier for you guys to understand. Bolo, for example. Um, um, you you didn't lose weight, yeah. But it's you. Uh, uh, but your uh, you, it it was your deadline. Your deadline was that I have to I have to lose my weight weight in weight in May. But May is already there. You didn't lose weight. But now you're you're thinking, yeah. I think cash. But is this cash going to happen? It's not going to happen at all. It's a wish. It's not going to happen. So you'll say, if I will lose my weight or if I lost my weight. If I lost my weight, I could be happy, I would be happy, or I might be happy. Is it clear? You see my point? So here, in this case scenario, what are you using in clause one? You're using simple past. Is it clear? And that's why these are called unreal conditional statements. Coming back to that particular example, St. Kilda Beachwala example, yeah? Uh, um, when I say something like this, now let's say, for example, a year passed by, ek saal ho gaya, yeah? One year is already over. And I'm explaining this story to Shreshna. Shreshna, do you know, last year, the same day, uh, there was a particular incident that happened with me. My wife bhaagai. Yeah, simply. Wife bhaagai. And I was really, really upset. And I was sitting at St. Kilda Beach and thinking to myself, Kaash wo idhar hoti or I, uh, I would be happy. Now, am I talking about a future unpredictable event or am I talking about a story in the past? In this case scenario. 
जब मैं उसको बोल रहा हूं श्रेष्णा देखो पिछले साल लास्ट ईयर इस टाइम पे आई वॉज सिटिंग एट द सेंकिल बीच एंड आई वॉज थिंकिंग एम आई टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस स्टोरी इन फ्यूचर और इज इट अबाउट पास्ट ऑफ कोर्स इट्स अबाउट पास्ट in this case scenario is this going to happen again is this going to happen or it's it's already past it's not going to repeat it's not going to happen again what is it an unreal conditional statement let me come to this particular sentence and look at this everyone what did i say this thing simple past is used for when we talk about wish let me write it here when we talk about wish part Let's say if I talked about the same thing to Shreshna, one year later I am talking about the same incident to Shreshna. So, how will I write it? I will say, if Shreshna, if my, if my wife, yeah. So here in this case, I will not use simple past anymore. I will use here this sentence. If if my wife had come, what did I use here? What is this? Let me write it in the block letter. What is this? Had plus third form. What do, you, what do you mean by whenever you have had plus third form? What is it? Past perfect. Past perfect. Yeah. Past perfect tense. If my wife had come. Yeah. And when you see past perfect in clause one already, the clause two will change this time. It will not be would, could, more, would, could, might. It will be would have. Would have. could have or might have yeah would have could have might have plus third form of verb is it clear now let's come to this point again if my wife had come i would have be or been i would have be or i would have been i would have been happy yeah i would have been happy third form of verb is it clear and this time am i talking about a future wish or am i talking about a past regret i'm talking about a past regret let's write it in bracket and of course these are called unreal conditional state this is another type of unreal conditional statement and and this time we're not talking about wish we're talking about past regret is it clear simple examples to make it clear so let's come to now now how many types of conditionals did we talk here talk about it three conditionals number one real conditional statement number two unreal conditional statement but when we talk about future wish future wish and number three another type of unreal conditional statement when we talk about past regret teen cheeze humne yahan pe seekhi hai and all three sentences have got different rules is it clear You see my point here? Did you understand this one? Now let me give you one simple example for all three. One, the same example, so that it gets clear. Yeah. So, for example, now let's come to this. Now, for example, let's come to real conditionals, and let let me put it in the bracket. Real conditional is used for possibility. Is it clear? So, real conditional possibility. Unreal conditional type one future wish. Unreal conditional type two past regret. Is it clear? Let's come to number one possibility. How about this? Uh, if i fly to sydney i will save time right or wrong if i fly to sydney i will save time bolo uh, you tell me nikita Nik this sentence is 100% right because if i fly simple present looks okay and second class mein kya hai i will save time will or can looks okay how about this yeah kaash mein sydney you are sitting in the train yeah and you are you you're not you you did not reach sydney yet you're not in sydney you are on your way to Sydney in that V line, yeah, and you are thinking, "Gosh, it's not time to ride train. It's taking so much time." I wish that I use the flight. In this case, you are talking about near future, which is not possible because you are already in the train. So, how do you write this sentence? Unreal conditional number one, future wish. How do you write it? If I flew, if I flew to Sydney, simple past, isn't it? If I flew to Sydney, second part me kya hoga? I would reach. I would reach. Have ne aaga isme? I would reach. Let me put it here so that you don't get confused here. Would, could, might ke saath. Whenever you put verb, the verb is always in first form, all the time. Is it clear? I would become or I would became. 
I would become. I could do or I could done. I could do. Which form of verb? First form of verb. Yeah. So could, would, might ke baad, what will we have? First form of verb. Kaise hoga? Rephrase this sentence. If I flew to Sydney, I would or I could or I might ke baad, verb one, reach my destination on time. Is it clear? But this time I'm, I'm talking about a future wish. How about if I'm repeating the same incident? I'm, I'm talking about the same incident. I'm talking about this to Raj a year later. So kaise bolunga? If I had consa conditional aega, unreal third unreal conditional this one yeah if i had flown yeah fly flew flown if i had flown to sydney i would have or i could have or i might have reached or reached reached this time you will you will use verb ka third form is it clear one same example and is it clear these statements are called what are they called? All of them. What did, we, what did we study in rule number four? Conditional statements. These are called conditional statements. Conditional statements. Now, did you understand all of these? Yeah? Is it clear? Or will you ever make a mistake, guys? If somebody asks you something like this, if I will get my scores? 100% wrong. Is it clear? Okay. Now, let's come to number five. I hope it is clear, yeah? Hmm. Oh, I love this grammar rule. Let me write it here. <clears throat> Have you heard of this word? Uh, let me actually write it here on this. So it'll be a little bit more clear for you guys here. Yeah? Okay. Forgot your name. Let me use, let me use uh, your name. What's your name? Sorry. Suraj. Just an example, yeah? So don't worry. Suraj. Was... Accused. Yeah. <clears throat> Suraj was, oh, sorry, Suraj was accused for stealing. Suppose you are a professional thief. Yeah. For, for example, yeah. It's cool nowadays, you know, professional thief. Yeah. Suraj was accused for st stealing a rare, yeah, a rare gem. Yeah. From yeah, <clears throat> from a local shop. Tell me, guys. Now, this question, let me read it. Suresh, can you read the sentence here, please, quickly? From a local shop. So, for example, yeah, he's a professional thief. Yeah. Because this is an online grammar class. <laughs> so, you tell me, Suraj. There's a blunder in this particular sentence. There's a mistake here, Suraj. Can you pick that mistake and tell me what is the mistake here? Everybody quiet. Nobody talks. This question is designated to Suraj. Suraj, you tell Can say Ravi, quiet. Let me ask this to Chatur. Chatur, how are you, Chatur? You look always thakahara. Kya hua hai, Chatur? Why don't you eat? Chatur, tell me, what is the mistake here? Come up with the Chatur answer, I'm telling you. <clears throat> steel. Suraj was accused for steel. For steel, does it make sense? Chatur, come on. This is not the right answer here. Hira, come up with the answer. You're smart and girl, huh? Wow, look at that, Hira. Trust me. Look, at, he's, This guy is getting smarter day by day, trust me. Accuse is a structure that whenever you use it, let me write the structure for accuse. Let me write it here. The accuse ka jo structure hai, yeah. Accuse, yeah. <clears throat> somebody of something. Accuse somebody of something. Forget about the example for now. Yeah, I'll come back to example. Accuse somebody of something. Accuse money kya hua? Hindi mein kya hua? Hindi mein it means ilzam, dosh. Dosh ya ilzam, yeah? So accuse somebody of something. For example, I'll say, I accused Suraj 
for stealing for stealing or of stealing of stealing of st accuse somebody of something is it clear so for example if they say something like hamare leader jo hai hamare priya leader jo hai india mein naam nahi bataunga so we'll say uh, this particular leader was accused for corruption or of corruption of corruption is it clear so something like this uh accused of this country mein australia mein we'll say uh what what is that lady jisko nikala bhi gaya tha hotel se what was it she's a very racist lady in Huh? Pauline Hanson. So that Pauline Hanson was accused dash racism or accused for racism or accused of racism? Accused of racism. So structure kya hua? Accuse somebody of something. How about if I say accuse? How about if I change accused with accused ed in the end? The rule will remain the same, isn't it? So no matter what form accuse is in, was accused. Yeah, will accuse. Yeah. will have accused yeah will be accused any form accuses in it will always be followed with a preposition called of let me highlight it so it will always be followed with of is it clear so never make a mistake in your reading blanks the structure is accuse somebody of something now this structure ye wala structure jo hai it is used when we talk about passive voice <coughs> passive voice kya hai bolo the action is done by someone passive voice could be anything let me give you the examples here a passive voice could be anything they say for example um i accused yeah passive uh, oh sorry not passive voice am my bad active voice not passive active voice yeah i accused yeah he accused she accused yeah they accused yeah so the action is done by these people themselves so for example the driver accused the passenger of not paying is it clear the driver accused the passenger of not paying is it clear? did you understand or for example the security guard accused uh, the staff member for stealing the bread accused the staff member of stealing the bread not for stealing but of stealing the bread is it clear how about if we change it to passive how about passive sentences passive sentences kaise honge he or she or they yeah so let me write it let me write an example so me, suraj kaise hoga suraj was so ye to likha hi hai upar suraj was accused this sentence is passive is it clear or let's send it active first so that you don't you don't get kyunki niche maine rule active ka hi likha hai so suraj ne hi kisi ko ilzam lagaya hai suraj ne किसी को दोष दिया है सूरज इज नॉट द स्टीलर एनी मोर इन स्टील समन एल स्टोल कैसे लिखेंगे सूरज एक्यूज सूरज एक्यूज किसको एक्यूज किया हिज फ्रेंड सो सूरज एक्यूज हिज फ्रेंड इल्जाम लगाया अपने दोस्त को किस किस रिलेटेड ऑफ ही एक्यूज हिज फ्रेंड ऑफ स्टीलिंग सपोज ही डिट स्टील हिज फ्रेंड स्टोल नाउ इट मेक्स सेंस मोर एग्जाम्पल एंड द रूल इज रेलिवेंट इज इट क्लियर एक्यूज समबडी ऑफ something so suraj accused his friend of stealing uh, could be anything for example uh, my wife i don't exercise so my wife says that you know exercise so my wife goes uh, i'll say my wife accused me of not exercising or being lazy is it clear but if it is past past mein kaise hoga let's uh, passive voice if it is passive voice passive voice mein kaise hoga accuse uh, sorry was or were and then accused and then off is it clear was accused of something yeah and then where would you position somebody this time somebody will come at the beginning is it clear somebody was accused of something so this is passive voice so let's write it here passive voice mane tum you were actually the impact receiver tumhare upar ilzam aaya hai you did not blame someone but somebody actually blamed you this is called passive voice so how do you write this so kaise hoga suraj so somebody is suraj suraj was bola accused of something yeah stealing or lying yeah did you understand this one so two structures here let me highlight both of them with accuse one is active and one is passive so active voice kya hai accuse somebody of something and what is passive voice 
somebody was a war accused of something else is it clear and both of them are used when we when we talk about blame is it clear how about the last grammar rule for today come to the last grammar rule number six and you will love this guys trust me um the assalamu alaikum sir can you look at this everyone everybody look at the, look at the television don't, don't look at me look at the television the politician Look at the sentence. And let me ask this to a particular student. Let me ask this to uh, Ravi. You tell me. Can you read the sentence quickly? Suppose we have some Gatia politicians in third world countries, yeah. And then these these people, Ravi. They, so look at this. So this particular politician was charged for something he did. And he committed a crime. And what was that crime? Murder. Now you tell me. A politician was charged for murder. What's the mistake here? If any. If there's any mistake, find it. Others don't help him. Yeah, stay quiet. If you know the answer, stay quiet. Ravi, come up with the answer and tell me. I'll give you three more seconds. Time up. Thank you. Uh, Atul, batao mujhe. What's the mistake here? No mistake. A, a, a safe route. No mistake. Can't find a mistake. Say no mistake. The politician was charged. Now, whenever you use this, this is a common collocation and a common mistake. With it. That's why I, I talked about these two here. Accuse and charge. Yeah. Accused is the blame. This is blame. Are and charge is the sentence. Yeah. So whenever you use word charge, it is always it always for it is always followed by with. Is it clear? So somebody was charged with murder is it clear did you understand this one so you never use for with charge is 100 percent wrong so you always use with with charge so let's change it let's write it this sentence is 100 percent wrong this is a desi common desi mistake guys with charge you always use with so let's correct it the politician could be anything yeah so the person was charged with could be anything. Could be murder, yeah. So, or could be anything. Stealing. Charged with stealing. Charged with uh, traffic. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Traffic infringement. So, any anything, yeah. So, charged with murder. So, the collocation is charged with. Is it clear, guys? Now, I'm going to ask you tomorrow. Uh, we are done with this class, uh, but I'm going to ask you tomorrow when we start with the grammar classes. And of course, we'll start with the grammar classes by asking you some of the rules that we talked about, this, uh, uh, we went through today. So please make sure that you maintain these rules in your notebook or maybe uh, on, a, on a Google Drive or maybe or on iCloud so that you know you can have always access to, you know, can always have access to those uh, grammar rules. And of course, maintain a separate note for those people who are coming, or, or people who are online, people who are watching us now. It's a good idea if you save them on your notes, if, you, if, you, if you're an uh, iPhone user. But for those people who are coming to the class, make sure that you maintain a separate notebook for these grammar rules. By the end of, by the end of this month or something like you will at least have more than 100, 100 rules that we have done. And you'll already be equipped with and you'll already be good in grammar. Is it clear, guys? Thank you very much, guys. Uh, other branches, can we please disconnect here? We finish with this uh, grammar class today. Um, other uh, students who are watching us online, thank you very much for joining us.